And before you place the nasogastric tube, there are a few considerations that all staff must consider. Uh, there is a nasogastric tube policy that all staff must have read and understood. All procedures and checks relating to insertion and confirmation of a nasogastric tube must be uh, checked by two um, professionals that have undertaken the training um, and they must be at the bedside at all times when it is done. I'm just going to introduce you to the types of um, nasogastric tubes that we use in this trust. So here is a fine bore feeding tube that we use for feeding and it's got clear markings all the way down the, the of the tube that is clearly seen on x-ray. To aspirate from this tube you are going to be using a purple enteral syringe for obtaining aspirate and you are going to be testing uh, contents of aspirate on pH indicator strips that are fit for human aspirate that are CE marked and when you look they are the product is in date. You will need either a pH within the safe range which is four and below in this trust and then um, if you have a pH within the safe range, then you might need an x-ray as well, depending on the patient's risk assessment. So this is a Riles tube um, that is mainly used for gastric drainage, but occasionally in critical care areas, in uh, an emergency situation, it may be required to give emergency drugs down this tube. So for example, drugs like aspirin or clopidogrel. When you use this tube for medications, uh, then it has to be assessed exactly the same as you would do a feeding tube. So this will be assessed either by uh, safe pH uh, and or x-ray. And that will mean you will use your purple enteral feeding syringe to, to obtain aspirate and you are using testing on your pH indicator strips as well. And just to be aware that you may have to confirm placement of a Riles tube that's going to be used for gastric drainage for emergency, for emergency drugs, um, that you will need the, all of the same checks as you would do for a feeding tube. So this uh, nasogastric tube is called a Riles tube. It is used for gastric drainage only, and this will be a one person check. So one person can just in insert this tube and assess this tube. There is no need to check. You will need to obtain aspirate from this tube with a clear bladder syringe. Uh, if you can get aspirate, um, then you just attach it to a drainage bag. Um, if you can't get aspirate, uh, the policy will say it's a good idea to remove this tube and to start again if you don't get any aspirate. Um, the two qualified staff need to identify the patient, they need to check in the notes to ensure the consultant has written um, the assessment of the patient and the need for the nasogastric tube and the two qualified nurses or nurse or doctor need to identify the correct tube, next measurement um, and confirmation of aspirate. Um, I'm just going to go and wash my hands and then I'll just introduce myself to the patient and ensure she's aware of the procedure. I'm just going to introduce myself to the patient and then we'll go through demonstrating the tube. Hello Liz, my name's Julie Little. Um, I'm going to be inserting a nasogastric tube today. Um, this is Angela, she's going to be assisting me in the procedure. Has the doctor had a chance to speak to you? Yes, he has. So you understand what the tube's for? Yes, I do. And you understand the procedure? I do, yes. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit uncomfortable, um, but it's not painful and it doesn't last long. Okay. Right. During the procedure, I'm going to be asking you to take a big swallow if you can, and I'm going to ask you to keep your head as still as you can. Okay. All right. If you need at any point, to stop if you can just raise your hand and we'll stop if it gets too uncomfortable or you want to break or you want to ask something just raise your hand and we'll stop if you're doing the procedure with a patient that can't communicate or isn't able to consent then you would need to make sure that it would be documented that it was in the patient's best interests and that the procedure was also discussed if possible with the next of kin would you confirm with me that um, we've got the right patient? Okay, we'll check the date of birth yes. and the registration number. 
that down there. Yes. Yeah. And that is you? Yes, it is. Before you start the procedure, it's always important that the patient's in the correct position. Um, the correct position would be as upright as is comfortable, um, slightly at sort of 45 degrees um, or higher. Um, you'd need to make sure the patient was lying central and supine um, and that the head was supported. So the tube I'm going to be using is the feeding tube, which is a core flow tube. I'm going to open the tube and demonstrate the tube. So the tube comes sort of coiled. If you gently uncoil the tube, check that it's intact. And you'll notice at the ends, it's got two stylets at the end. One of the stylets has got a label on, okay, and that's to identify that that contains the guide wire. Before you insert the tube, it's always good to close off the stylets. Unfortunately, you have to remove the label, but that I always keep the label just to remind me that the guide wire is in situ. So the next part of the procedure is measuring the next measurement. Um, the tube has graduations on the tube to enable you to do that. Okay. So the measurement is next, so it's nose to ear to epistarnum. You can measure, you can gauge where the epistarnum is by feeling on your patient, feeling where the bottom of the rib cage is and placing your fingers just below that. Okay. So the next measurement would be, so it's nose, ear. You sometimes need assistance just so you try not to contaminate the tube as you do it. Hold on to where the tube comes to so you don't lose your place. And look at your graduations. So the graduations go 50, 55, 56. 56. Agreed. So that would be your next measurement. The next measurement we had was 56. So to ensure that we place the tube at the correct length, we always put a mark on the tube just to guide us. And that makes it easier to ensure placement is at the next or greater. Part of the procedure is to lubricate the tip of the tube. The self-lubricating tubes, which is activated in water. Oops. So I'm going to go into your right nostril here, okay? Mm -hmm. You'll feel it hit the back of your nose. It'll be a bit uncomfortable. But if you possibly can, if you try and keep your head still. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, ready? I'm going to ask you to swallow once I've got the tube in. Okay. You can have a big swallow for me. Well done. You're doing really, really well. Doing really well. Nearly there. We're nearly there. Well done. Well done. That's it. And we're at the next. Well done. As you can see, we're at the next measurement. So it's 56 on the tube, and we can also see the mark that we made, which makes it a bit easier to identify. The policy um, suggests that we try and insert the tube a little bit further for safety reasons, which I'm just going to attempt now. It isn't always possible. Um, but it's always good to have a go. So I'm just going to see if I can just get the tube just down a little bit further, Liz. We're now at 60 centimetres, which is four centimetres further than the next. I'll just check that. Yes, that's 60. So we've now applied the nasal fixed tape to secure the tube. Um, still asking your patient to be as still as possible while we do this. Following insertion of the nasogastric tube, it's very important to check that the tube hasn't coiled in the back of the person's throat. Um, to do this, you would ask the person to open their mouth and inspect inside the oral cavity. So the tube was inserted now to 60 centimetres. 
I'm just going to put a small mark on the tube just to aid us when we're checking the, the length of the tube. I'm just going to put a mark on the tube lids just so that we can see them. There. The next part of the procedure is to confirm position of the tube. So the first part would be to confirm aspirate using the enteral syringe. So you use the stylet that hasn't got the guide wire. Undo that. Insert the syringe and withdraw some aspirate. Replace the stylet. Okay. okay, so you have the pH strips, so always use white paper or tissue. And then it's a two person check against the pH indicator. pH 1.5, and you always line up the three. Um, Squares. Squares. I agree, that's 1.5. It's within the safe range. It's absolutely essential that we complete all the relevant documentation. The patient identity was correct. We uh, had appropriate consent was completed. The tube type, size 10. That 56. value was 56. And we've so got on that. And what was the measurement of the external marking of the tube at the nose? It was inserted by you, so I'll get you to sign your name on there. And the date and time. Is the patient considered a high risk of aspiration? I think when you had a look in the notes that it said uh, the patient is, so we were aware mm -hmm. of that. Um, but we still have to go to our primary check, which is confirmation of placement, but we will need a secondary check as well. So has the aspirate been obtained? Yes. Yes. Um, and the aspirate then proceed to B, and then it says, is the pH between 1 and 4, which is considered the safe range? So the result was 1.5, um, and now two people are going to sign this to say that they've witnessed that. Now we were very, uh, so if you had a pH of 1.5 and you weren't at high risk of acid aspiration, then the policy says that you can proceed to feed. Um, but we are aware that the patient today was at high risk, so we know that we are going to have to have a second confirmatory check. Um, we were very lucky on this occasion to get pH of aspirate, um, but if we were unable to get a aspirate, then there are several procedures that you can follow in the trust policy. Um, you can lie the patient onto the left-hand side. You can do mouth care, because when you put something in somebody's mouth, they, it stimulates the gastric uh, contents. Um, you can use a, uh, a smaller syringe, a 20 ml syringe, enteral syringe. You could put 10 or 20 ml of air down that tube. And that's not the whoosh test, that's just to make sure that the tube si isn't sitting on the gastric mucosa. So there are procedures that you have to follow if you can't get aspirate. Um, if you got aspirate and it was within the safe range, then you come along and you write it on the form. But if you can't get aspirate or if you're unclear and not absolutely uh, uncertain about the pH, then you would have to go on to have a second confirmatory check. So we're going to have a second confirmatory check today. Uh, and that will be an x-ray. So you have to make sure that you fill out the x-ray form and make sure that it's clearly written on the x-ray form that this x-ray is for confirmation of a nasogastric tube. Nasogastric tube check by x-ray. All clinical staff who check nasogastric tube placement by x-ray must have successfully completed e-learning. Reducing the risk of feeding through a misplaced feeding tube this must be completed every three years. And just as a reminder, um, doctors, foundation doctors year uh, one and year two, they are not allowed to check x-rays for placement of a nasogastric tube in this trust. While we are waiting for x-ray confirmation, we will put this uh, sign by the patient bedside, nailed by nasogastric tube, and this patient is awaiting confirmation that the tube is safe to use. So it means that we cannot uh, put anything down this tube that's not even wa sterile water, no medications or any feed until this tube has been properly confirmed to be placed in the stomach and is safe to use. Okay. Go. Once the x-ray has been confirmed, it's always very, very important to make sure that the doctor confirming the x-ray has completed all parts 
of the section on the form and you cannot use the tube until all the parts on the form have been completed. Any staff member encountering a nasogastric tube that has not been properly confirmed to be placed in the stomach and the documentation is incomplete are empowered to stop the line and do not use the tube and seek senior help.